it's Sabrina Carpenter and why did I do that? Okay, one more time. Hey, <laughs> okay. hey, it's Sabrina Carpenter and this is my favorite lyrics. I did it again. All right. Tell me who I am. Guess I don't have a choice. All because I liked a boy. <laughs> I wrote this lyric in New York. I wrote this song in New York after a lot of reflection and uh, coming to a conclusion of like how, you know, one thing can become such a big thing over something so minuscule. I think all any songwriter ever wants is to speak their truth and speak, you know, closest to their own voice. And I feel like that song perfectly captured a really interesting time in my life. And I feel like really summed up a lot that I wish I could have said for a really long time. So that song's really special to me. And I love seeing how it's related to people all over the world. Cause I think when I wrote it, I didn't think anyone would relate to it in the way that they have, which has been really nice, so. Anytime I do that, by the way, feel free to edit it out. <laughs> um, woke up this morning, thought I'd write a pop hit. How quickly can you take your clothes off? Pop quiz. Shakespearean. <laughs> Basically, at this point, I didn't think I was writing a song anymore. I thought I was just being a silly girl. And uh, I ended up using these lines as um, an outro for my song, Nonsense. And they just rhymed, tr truthfully. Pop hit, pop quiz. Actually, now that I'm realizing it, it bothers me that I say pop twice. I'm gonna change the song. I think I'm gonna unrelease it and try one more time. <laughs> but it, feel free to use these as pickup lines. They work. You also change the outro a lot on tour. Do you have a favorite variation? Ooh, that's a good question. Cause I feel like some cities I just went a little rogue in. It had nothing to do with the city and more to do with the rhyme, if the rhyme rhymed with something good. I think I said something in Philadelphia, which is where I was born. Uh, about rearranging my organs. It's just because it rhymed with the city I was born in. So it's kind of funny how those things happen. And my mom was in the crowd that night, but I'd probably say Philly was my favorite. That's my shape. I made the shadow. That's my name. Don't wear it out though. It's so weird reading these out loud. I'd like prefer them with melodies, but um, this song is uh, Sue Me. And this was a song that I wrote after I got sued. I actually really loved that's my name, don't worry it out though, because I felt like I always heard people say it my whole life, and it was one of the first songs I feel like my sense of humor and my personality was like really infused into the song. How do I empower myself and make myself feel confident? I think a lot of it is letting go, like physically, like, I know people say like letting loose and dancing is like good for that, but it really is. I feel like sometimes if I'm ever feeling too self-conscious to just like, shake it out and get it out of your system is really important. Um, so I love that I have friends that love to dance with me. My friends do just dance all the time, which is also a really weird thing that I've never told anybody, but they'll like, we'll be texting, they'll be like, BRB, gotta just dance. And then they come back in three minutes and I'm like, how was it? They're like, we did the, 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 the good one. So no one cares. <laughs> um, I deserve an hour in a week to focus on my thoughts, not so obsessed with yours, I can't hear myself speak. Uh, I start crying. Um, no, this is probably one of my favorite lyrics on the album, Emails I Can't Send. It was just such a real <laughs> thought uh, at a time in my life where I felt like I was giving so much of the space in my mind to other people and other things and not myself at all. And so I was just kind of like, begging for even just like the smallest amount of time that I could actually like dedicate to myself and my own thoughts. And it's quite literal in that sense, but um, every relationship is so different. And sometimes you need to learn the lesson yourself and you need to take all the time that it takes to learn it. There's no like, you have to do this and this is the only right way. Like, I think if anything, I've learned that every situation is so specific and individual based on the people. And sometimes all it does take is communicating and working things out. And other times it's really good to step away from people and step further away and then further and then take more steps and then never again. So, oh, this is another jerker. I'm not gonna say that ever again. I meant like tear jerker, obviously. I didn't mean, this, this one is really fun to sing live. Being myself, did that emasculate you? Learning from you that I can walk away too. Whenever I'm playing shows, I feel like the girlies just scream this lyric from their gut a little harder. Like I can like hear, like I can hear them losing their voices when they scream this line, which is really awesome. The fact that that could give anybody any sort of sense of clarity maybe from where they're at in their life in a situation that isn't good for them. I think learning from you that I can walk away too is another one of my favorites on the album because it took me a long time to learn that lesson. So, and I still learn it all the time. You gotta be reminded sometimes I gotta listen to my own album.
Why do you think so many men are scared of successful women? Whoa! Ooh. <laughs> gonna go back here. No, uh, uh, I don't know if that's like a universal truth. In some cases, with anyone that is sure of themselves and is confident and kind of like shines a light, that can bring out other people's insecurities and, and make them ask themselves questions that maybe they're not ready to answer about themselves yet. And so I think it's a little bit less about like them being scared of it and, and more just like people crossing paths at times that maybe they're not ready to cross paths at yet. Also, it's pretty intimidating when you're five foot tall and so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you show me too much love, it makes me leave. Guess that's one of many things that's wrong with me. So I wrote this song when I was 17. Maybe too self-aware, too young of an age, but I actually still am this way sometimes, which is not something I recommend, but it is just something that I was like, super aware of in that moment of being like, you know, when you're focused on yourself, it's a really, it's a good thing to be focused on yourself, but also sometimes you push away really good things and really good people when you're too focused on yourself. So life is about balance. And what else gives you the ick? <laughs> I lost my balance. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. What gives me the ick? Oh my God. It's like little things, like weird things. It could be as simple as like a bad flannel. Honestly, like if you're wearing a like just like a flannel that I'm not a fan of like the colors working together I'm probably just gonna like look at you a little different, but then you know clothes can change so for me Like I'm scared to eat in front of people. I've never said this. I feel so vulnerable And that's not a nick for other people But for me like I'm always just like for whatever reason eating in front of people is like my I hate it And I always feel like people are getting the ick from me if I'm eating in front of them I don't know why I don't know why I just want to like eat with like a little bubble over me Some people like oh they swim weird. I don't know like there's like some weird <laughs> ones. I'm like, it's so funny to me. Okay, let's do this one. Reading these lyrics, I'm a little crazy. Okay, you used a fork once. It turns out forks are f***ing everywhere. What can I say? There's a lot in between the lines. So forks are super common and they're like very popular because you only have really a few options. It's like a fork, a spoon, a knife, and then like a spork in some territories. But um, in this case scenario, I was like, oh, it's so Dumb. Like, he used to eat with a fork. <laughs> like, I literally said that as a joke, and I was like, what if it was? <laughs> and then they let me put it out. Someone was like, master it. I mean, if I'm gonna take myself seriously, I'm an artist, I can do it, I swear. Sometimes, like at the end of anything that's really painful, it's like the smallest thing in the world can set you off. And the smallest thing in the world can remind you of them. And that's what I was really trying to capture. I was just like, it can literally be anyone or anything or, you know, any little minuscule detail. And Fork just, just did it. And now my fans bring Forks to shows which I'm a little concerned about. <laughs> Sometimes they're waving forks at me. It looks like pitchforks. That's why I feel like I'm being almost attacked. But it's so peaceful, like they just wave them. <laughs> Anyways, I put too much on myself thinking I don't deserve what I've earned. Oof, it's like not even 10 a.m. I wrote this song when I was I believe I was, I just turned 18. I think that's like a scary time for anyone. You feel everything and it feels so much heavier because you're young and you're experiencing it all for the first time. And there's definitely been a lot of times I've like had imposter syndrome or think you can work so hard and still not, you know, be enough. But obviously those are the thoughts that kind of come and go most days and it's normal for everyone to kind of have them, so. Yeah, I don't feel that way all the time, but then there's moments. Definitely hard on myself. I've always sort of been that way and I think it's what keeps me motivated, but then sometimes it's also what drives me a little crazy and I I think I'm working on trying to be a little bit more present and also just practicing gratitude as much as I possibly can. This is, if I'm just writing happy songs, will anybody sing along? This was actually like a real thought that I had at some point. I was just like, oh, I hope um, people don't hate my music if it's all just happy and upbeat because I'm, I'm like either falling in love or I like someone. That's like a thing that I've heard throughout my whole life, I think, people being like, the more hurt and in pain you are, the better the songs. And I'm like, don't tell me that because I, I don't want to be in that perpetual state forever. And I've learned that that is not the case people will sing along to happy songs as well. It's just one of those things that's, we all are like secretly afraid to be like, 
cute and giddy. It's really nice when we can have those moments where everyone's just like, oh, it's fun to be in love or it's fun to like celebrate something exciting and positive, so. It'd be so nice, right? Right? If we could take it all off and just exist and skinny dip in water under the bridge. I think this has to be like one of my favorite metaphors on the whole album. It all started with skinny dip in water under the bridge of feeling like you can shed yourself of your past and just be okay with the fact that things happen and let it be and not be so hard on yourself for making mistakes and going through the motions of feelings because it's really important to feel every aspect of life, whether that's like good, bad, happy, sad, everything in between. I, I also just think it was funny because it was not a song that like I immediately heard and was like, that's, a, that's the smash single. I just, I felt like it was something that was taking a bit of a left turn from maybe, you know, some of the stuff in the past and um, setting a foundation for everything that was coming, so. That's quite an answer. Like, you know, when like people give like those answers, you're like, we don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm like, why did I explain? Edit it out. Just edit it out. And you never do, that's the thing. You actually never do. You guys specifically never do. I'm always like, please? And you're like, don't worry. We'll edit it out, love. We've got your back. You don't, you're not, you're gonna keep all of this. Oh my God, it's still going. Other artists that inspire me as lyricists, um, definitely two of the people I got to write the album with, with Julia Michaels and J.P. Sachs, I think are some of the best, yeah, right there. Some of the best lyricists I've ever met and just close, close friends. Fiona Apple, uh, Joni Mitchell, Taylor Swift. Yeah, there's some really, really incredible lyricists of our generation. I'm lucky to be alive to witness, for sure. These have been my favorite lyrics. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to subscribe to Pop Buzz. Mwah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs>